Okay, what we're going to do with this tutorial is uh, learn how to resize a box or resize a brush, uh, how to uh, make the box hollow so that you can create those six brushes that make up uh, the worlds that you'll create, and also how to ungroup these brushes so that you can start to apply unique textures to them. Uh, the first thing you want to do is, uh, if you recall, this is the, the box that we made last time. Uh, it wasn't sized to anything in particular, so we're going to now size it to something that we actually want to use. Uh, in order to size, the first thing you need to do is uh, uh, grab the selection tool, which is on the left toolbar here. So just click that. And then in your camera view, uh, click the box that you made. Now you notice in your 2D views, your top view and two side views, that uh, the box has now become active. You also notice that there's handles that you can use to resize it. For fun, uh, let's try to resize this into a square that's five. 512 units by 512 units and 128 units high. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is just grab one of the, the handles, and so I'm going to use the top view to resize it into a square 512 by 512. Just pull it down, and you notice that the units are resized, and if you look in the camera view, uh, it also uh, shows you what's being reduced. So we got half of it done, it's 512 units. So just grab another one of the handles and just pull it till we get 512 by 512. And there we go. We have a square. Now, one of the things we talked about was in, we wanted to make it 128 units high. So you go to one of the side views, just pull the handle until we have 128. So we now have a square that's 512 units by 512 units and 128 units high. All right, excellent. So what we want to do now is uh, talk about how to um, hollow out this, this uh, box that you've created. Uh, right now it's just a big solid box. And so what we're going to do is, uh, is hollow out that box. And there's three ways you can do this. One is you can go up to the, the Tools drop-down menu, drop it down, and you'll see that there is a command to make hollow. You can also, those of you that are into keystrokes, uh, you can control H. But what I like to use is to go to the 2D view and right click uh, your box. And you'll notice that there's a drop down menu and make hollow. And just click that. Now it's going to ask you how thick do you want the walls to be. Uh, its default is 32. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is to set them to 8. 8 is roughly equivalent to kind of the traditional thickness of walls. It's a, it's a decent unit width to work with. And so just go ahead and click OK. And what you have now is you have a hollowed out box. So let's just, uh, from the camera view, slide on in. And you see, look at, you have a hollowed out room. It's that simple. All right, the other thing you want to do now is what you have is uh, essentially uh, six brushes that are grouped together. So click the selection tool and click any of the walls in here and you notice that all six of them become active. Uh, the ceiling, the floor, and all four of the walls. This can be problematic if you're starting to apply textures uh, unless you want to live in an entire brick box. But if you want to have floors and ceilings you need to ungroup uh, all six of these brushes. Uh, you do it a lot like you did with the Make Hollow. There's three different options again. One, you can use the drop down on the tools. Uh, the second one is you can control U, or else, like in the previous example, you can click in the 2D view, right click, and you'll see that it has an ungroup function. So just go ahead and click that. Now going back and uh, selecting the selection tool, going into the box in the camera view, now when you select a wall, you get just that wall, or the ceiling, or the floor. And what this allows you to do is to apply unique textures to each one of the, uh, the areas. So if you want to have carpeted floors, you can now put in carpet. And if you want to have drywall on the sides, you can put in drywall. The last thing you need to do is to make sure you save your project. And save often. Because now we're starting to make changes, and you want to make sure that you're applying all these changes that you make. All right.